it needs to be redefined so as to accommodate uh, others. This is never a smooth process. Since national identity is ultimately about the ownership of the country, about who does and does not belong to it, and whose interests and claims deserve to be given priority, every definition of national identity becomes a site of contestation between those who think the country is theirs and those who want to share that ownership. The history of the United, the United States provides a good example of this. For decades after its foundation, Americans were expected to be white, Protestant, and of British descent. Other European immigrants, some of whom, such as the French and the Dutch, were associated with the founding of the country, were seen as insiders, outsiders. Citizens enjoying a second-class status and expected over time to assimilate into the Anglo-Protestant culture and stock. Subsequent European immigrants, indigenous people, black slaves, Asian immigrants, Jews and others faced even greater problems. Over time and after a considerable uh, struggle, American society became more open and had no tightly organized social or cultural structure into which the immigrants had to fit, as still remains the case with almost all European countries. The American identity over time lost its narrow racial and cultural associations and became available to all its citizens. An American can now be white, black or yellow, Protestant, Catholic or Hindu, native born or a recent arrival and does not have to speak with a standard accent. Black, Asian and newly uh, nat naturalized immigrants have no hesitation in identifying themselves as Americans and neither their fellow citizens nor outsiders are in the least puzzled by such claims. This uncoupling of national from ethnic, religious and other identities is a remarkable historical achievement of the American people, in no way unique to them, but nevertheless one of their greatest contributions. Something similar is, big, is happening in Britain, slowly but surely. Historically, Britain had distinct ethnic, racial and religious associations. It was equated with England, whiteness and Christianity. All three are now being challenged and increasingly they are beginning to appreciate that Britain is multinational, multi-religious and multicultural. Devolution has highlighted and institutionalized Britain's internal national diversity. Race, which mattered much until the 1990s and uh, had become uh, quite important in defining Britishness, doesn't matter as much as it once did. Religion, especially Islam, is still seen as alien and threatening, but that too sh uh, should go the way of race. Britain now evokes the multicultural images of mosques and temples, elderly gentlemen walking with children to Friday prayers in response to the call of the Mohazin, Diwali celebrations in public squares, the noisy multi-ethnic streets of big cities, spicy food saris and steel bands, as well as many hybrid images reflecting intercultural experimentation. British identity is capacious and heterogeneous enough to allow its different communities and religions and regions to find their representation in it. This makes it easier for uh, minorities and others to take ownership of Britain and build commu common bonds with each other. A similar process also occurs in relation to national symbols how they get pluralized and become a collective property of all Britons irrespective of race or culture or religion. In the mid-1980s, racist groups in Britain flaunted the national flag at their meetings and sought to make it an exclusive symbol of white Britain. Not surprisingly, the ethnic minorities found it difficult to relate to the national flag and some even felt threatened by it. Over time, many of them began to reclaim the flag by displaying it on ethnic and multi-ethnic and on ethnic and multi-ethnic occasions. This became particularly evident at the Sydney Olympics in 2000, and was reinforced at the Athen at the Athens Olympics four years later, when when the medal-winning black athletes did the lap of honor draped in the Union Jack. Their action had a double meaning, which was not lost on the British public. The black athletes were saying that they belonged to Britain and were proud to do so. 
but they were also saying that Britain belonged to them as well, that they were its equal citizens, and that the flag and the national anthem symbolized them as much as the rest of their fellow citizens. In other words, as immigrants come to be accepted as part of a country's national identity, the country looks at its past and constructs its historical narratives from a multicultural perspective. New facts are discovered and the familiar ones are seen in new light. Britain, for example, at this, in Britain, for example, it is now widely accepted, something that wouldn't have been accepted 100 years ago, that black people have been here since Roman times, that after the abolition of slavery in 1833, they married local women, and a sizable section of the country's population is a product of this. It is also being appreciated more and more that Muslims and Indians have been a significant presence for at least three centuries and that there was a Muslim peer in the House of Lords as early as 1889. In short, what I am suggesting is that national story comes to be retold, the national narrative comes to be redefined. It's the way in which the history is written undergoes profound changes. And it's very striking that as people come to be accepted, and as we tend to define national identity in the present, in this broad, capacious, multicultural manner, we begin to see our own past very differently. And the past begins to look multicultural. Which is why it's, it's hardly surprising that almost all public leaders, from Gordon Brown and now Michael Gove and David Cameron, all of them talk about our mongrel nation or mongrel identity, something that would have frightened the daylight out of the Victorians. That it has almost become a matter of pride that we have been multicultural or multi-ethnic. The racial and ethnic mix of the British people and the diverse foreign influences that have shaped Britain's culture are all widely acknowledged without embarrassment and sometimes with pride. Britain begins to, as Britain begins to appreciate its multicultural history, it realizes that its current diversity is not recent or alien, but an ongoing feature of its history and comes to feel at ease with it. For their part, minorities appreciate that the country has known many like them in the past, and that they too will one day become a valued part of the country. This brings the two together on a shared common space of a shared definition of national identity. Britishness, in other words, is an ongoing historical project. It is about defining ourselves in such a way that we see ourselves as part of a single community. The project cannot be driven or manipulated from above. It is the work of British citizens, conducted informally in countless daily encounters through the medium of democratic dialogue and democratic choices. It is not about a checklist of values, the kind of thing that Gordon Brown used to talk about, that these are our values, and to be British, you must share those values. It is not about a checklist of values, but rather about <coughs> recognizing that we share common interests and common fate, and that a common life that we intend to build must be based on and recognize both our differences and our shared ideals. In many of the discussions of national identity, its local roots are often forgotten, and I want to make a couple of remarks about it. We live in Britain, but we also live in a particular spot in Britain, such as Bradford, or London, or Manchester. Much of our life is lived locally, and has a local character. National identity is built on the foundation of local identity. It is striking that those young Muslims who say that they do not feel British also say that they, that they cannot imagine themselves living outside Bradford or Birmingham. Local identities are generally more open and more loosely scripted than the national identity. Britishness immediately evokes historical memories of empire and lots of other things. London or Bradford doesn't. Britishness has cultural associations like race or religion or whatever, which requires a great deal of effort to remove. Local identity has no such cultural associations. London belongs to all its residents, 
and has no religious, racial, cultural or other associations.